All right, welcome everybody to uh, the Power Comics YouTube uh, channel. I'm joined here by uh, Benjamin Mara. Ben, how you doing? Doing uh, well, thank you. Yeah, and today we're we're joined by a special guest, someone we are very inspired by, someone uh, we we lo whose work we we love and celebrate here at Power Comics. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please meet uh, Mr. Steve McArdle. <laughs> Pleasure to be here, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 an honor and a pleasure. Oh, of course, man. It's a, it's an honor for us to have you here. I mean, you know, Ben and I, when we when we first cracked open Vendetta, Holy Vin uh, Vindicator, uh, I mean, our, our minds were blown uh, by that issue. Obviously, Ben has more of a history, uh, being a fan of Crowbar, and and then we both were saw artillery floating around in Instagram, and yeah, we've just been a, just a huge fan. You you exemplify. Uh, the best, the top end of any sort of power comic that that exists. So thanks so much. Wow, dude, that's a huge compliment. Thank you. Um, well, let's let's kick things off because uh, I mean I've I've a million questions, obviously, but I wanted to ask you about um, uh, your first comic that I, I'm aware of under the Red Bullet Comics moniker, which is Vendetta, Holy Vindicator. What can you tell us about like how did this all come together for you like like walk us through maybe your background with with wanting to be a comic artist and then how did you get to this this point with this yeah yeah i'm sure like you guys like i've been a huge comics fan since i was a little kid uh, i grew up with marvel and dc and i worshiped frank frazetta and john buscema and george perez and i drew all the time i'd always draw and i come up with my characters and probably by high school, I started to get a little bit more serious. And then I, I probably created Vendetta maybe when I was 18 or so. Awesome. 17 or 18. Um, and I started doing the first rough little panels or drawings. Um, so, but it wasn't a, until a few more years where I got more serious about doing a finished book. And I, you know, as you, graduate high school and you're kind of in the crossroads of life you kind of do i go to art school or 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 do i try to get a job at the publishers or and and i went to one of the big new york cons and i bought the first few pages from vendetta number one and you know people are like oh that's cool man that's you know keep going but i would i could tell i wasn't going to get work you know i could mm -hmm. tell so i was like either I can do samples of Spider-Man and Batman and probably not get work or and have all these pages that I don't know what I'm going to do with, or I can create my own stuff and try to publish it. And I'd kind of, I thought of it as like art school. And so sort of like, I guess I took a little bravery. I don't know if I'd do it today, but I kind of made my mistakes in public and I came back kind of determined to put out that first vendetta and I wasn't sure how to do it or what I was going to do. Knew nothing about solicitations or distributors or anything. I wasn't working at the print place then either. Um, wow. But I went on vacation with my dad and he had seen the pages we I was working on. He's like, holy cow. He's like, you're getting real serious about your stuff here, right? Wow. And I brought him into a comic book store and I showed him like, I think it was X-Men number one by Jim mm. Lee. Cause he loved comics too. And I showed him, look hmm. at the artwork, look at the quality of artwork that's out there nowadays. It's like, you know, maybe 1990, 91 or so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's like, wow, this stuff's great. He looked, my dad loved comics too. So he gave me the money to do that first Vendetta number one. Wow. And I just, my goal was just to make enough money to make Vendetta number two and then three and so on. So by the time number one came out, I had already finished number two and maybe three half of number three because wow. I was going to do a deadline and really put myself yeah you know in 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 the deep end of the pool treat it like say, a job exactly Ben right so I I promised like when I started Red Bullet like if you buy a vendetta number one within three months I'm going to give you number two within another three months you're going to get number three and that's all from a one person vision and I, I I was just going by the seat of my pants but wow can I ask you one quick thing here? Because you just mentioned your you 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 mentioned your father, um, whom you dedicate the first book to, um, and I was wondering if you can you can talk a little bit about that, because um, um, as you said, he did finance it, and uh, just more in the backstory on that. Yeah, I mean, God, what a great guy! He 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 passed before I got to publish the book, obviously, mm -hmm. but 
I, it's in his honor. Like I wouldn't have been able to do it without him and him giving me that encouragement when he saw the pages was like, well, I remember when you were a little kid scribbling and drawing your, your funny Spider-Man cartoon car- copies. I'm doing stuff now. It's my own characters and I'm creating the origin. And yeah, I know there's a lot of rough edges on, on, on those early books and the stuff I'm still doing has got a lot of rough edges, but I'm okay. trying to piece together my own little universe and I'm trying to do origins and reveal characters and stagger stuff. And, and if you look back at the red bullet line, it all kind of ties together, you know, like you, there's little, asterisks that would reference other issues just like you know spider-man 107 that go back to number 17 to read the first you know totally. kingpin or goblin you know amazing totally. um steve what what uh sort of distribution uh channels were you able to access during that time i know you said that you didn't really know anything about solicitation or that whole process but did you sort of learn on the job how to do it like how, how did you how were you able to get Vendetta out into comic book stores? Was it you would just go around the comic book stores with a stack and like hand it to them to see if they would they would put it on their shelves or or what did you do? Uh, yeah, Ben, actually a little of that, a little of everything. Um, I would do in uh, the local cons, you know, like even back then I think it was one of the first SPXs, uh, early oh, wow. early wow. early indie uh, comic shows and just regular comic conventions. Um, I was able to get in like right off the bat. Like, it's funny. I did the first solicitation for Vendetta one and I never heard back from anybody. Uh, so I had no mm. idea. I just figured it felt like on deaf ears. Oh. And then I went into my, my LCS to go pick up my books, you know, a couple weeks later. And the guy in the store goes, Oh, Hey Steve, I, uh, I saw the solicitation for Vendetta number one. And, uh, it was advanced comics for heroes world or capital city back then. Mm-hmm. So I was like, Really? I didn't know. Awesome, cool. He goes, Yeah, I ordered some for the store. So amazing. So, so I they, actually so this is before the distributor war is sort of like yeah, yeah, decimated like, the landscape and just left diamond, right? That's it exactly. And a lot. Well, you of mentioned people, that in the book, yeah, right? I think one of them does not talk about that. Right, exactly. Like, I had what five or six distributors when I started, minus Diamond, because we get Heroes World, Capital City multi-book and periodical sticks uh there was one or two that went overseas wow. and then within a couple of years it went down to just diamond and they wouldn't take my books they wouldn't take a lot of people's books right so I, you know, I always said too like i not to lay blame simply at their <laughs> feet but i Please wonder do. how different <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how different the 90s might have been if the distributors had survived oh, totally yeah that's interesting. It's kind of like, you know, in my world when, you know, covering a lot of wrestling subject matter in my world, it's very similar if like, you know, the indie wrestling scene or, you know, if that didn't die out by the majors would have been totally. I think, I think you see that story in a lot repeated in all sorts of different realms of media. Um, right. One question I had just jumping quick into Vendetta number one is um, like something that was apparent to me when I first looked at this and when Ben and I looked at it too was like, Man, the character design that you have for all of these characters is so well thought out. Like from Vendetta, or if we're talking about just these soldiers here, or Bludgeon, or the mutants, or things like that. Like, what's your process in terms of like coming up with these characters and designing them? And like, what are you inspired by to do so? Wow, thank you. Yeah, um, you know, like I said, like I I live and breathe. You know the silver bronze age marvel comics and and also too like the black and white stuff like i was inspired by the turtles and seeing what independent people could do on their own you know um so yeah i just i sit down with a piece of paper and then i draw the look of the character and then i try to do almost you know just a rough bio what's their name what's their identity what's the their backstory supporting characters and just try to 360 as much of it as I can and yeah. even like it's down to the logos like you'll notice like a lot of by the time artillery makes his first appearance he's already like saying his own logo right so I like, love yeah. that I love that because I because I like that too like you know like I, I love album covers and I love great logos and 
great lettering. So to me, I want a good logo to go with each character. Well, that to me uh, screams metal fan right away. <laughs> is so is the idea <laughs> of you know being being obsessed with the logo and how badass it is and 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 the branding of that is a very metal thing. So tell us, like, you know, when we looked at this comic, it was very apparent to us that this was created by a metalhead. So what's sort of like your your journey with metal and, and how that crosses over into the comic world? Yeah, I mean, to me, it, it crosses a lot because I music and art have a lot that weave together. And, mm -hmm. and to me, like, I love listening to music and enjoying the album covers. There were mm -hmm. some comic books that I would read and I'd put on certain music. Like, like real just soft background music to read to sometimes is, is good. So to me, they, they overlap a lot. So I try to bring in my sensibility of growing up with, you know, Iron Maiden and, and, and totally. Saxon and Thin Lizzy and Motorhead <laughs> yeah. awesome. and putting in some leather and spikes and chains and mohawks and biker gangs and <laughs> cyberpunks and, you know, band flyers on the walls. Amazing. Mm -hmm. It works so well. <laughs> it just you know I it's it's I guess it's part of your own style and like you can't help it just like you know, like Ben like I I can recognize your work when I see it right away now I can go oh my God that's that's Ben Mara and so <laughs> nice. I, I guess to me like the the best thing for me is if people can look at my stuff and go oh that looks like McArdle okay I get it it's got a certain vibe totally. or an energy no doubt no doubt can you talk about um you know you you did. I think you mentioned that you, you were 19 when you did the Vendetta first issue. Um, I don't know if I was ever able to even finish two pages of a comic when I was 19. <laughs> you know, could, could you talk about like the discipline that you had back then as like your work ethic? Where did that come from? And, you know, how did you stay focused on this project yeah. uh, uh, to see it all the way through? I mean, not just one issue, but four <laughs> issues that was all planned out. It was, if I'm not mistaken, it was planned to be a four issue series. Mm -hmm. And you right. did four issues, which is, you know, when we're looking at power comics, we often like to talk about how usually it's just one issue with the promise of more that never come, but you actually saw your entire vision completed. Um, yeah, it says right in the back here, we're gonna do four issues, we're gonna do spin-offs, we're gonna, right. yeah, like it's, if you've you done, had it all. You've, <laughs> You've done other titles too. So where, where does that, um, you know, focus and uh, discipline to do the work come from? And, and can you just talk about what your process was like? Yeah, it's good when you're young. you got a lot of a lot of spit and vinegar and energy. Um, and it, I was I was 19 when I started like the ideas on Vendetta. But I was probably into my 20s by the time I really got into drawing that first book. Got it. And then getting to the point where I'm like, either am I, am I going to go to art school and or am I going to try to get work from the companies or do I want to try to do my own thing? And my goal was to be Todd McFarlane, like to work for Marvel, right. make good money, get a name and then go do my own thing, which I would have done Vendetta in the long run anyway. So right. so what I, I guess I skipped the middleman and just went right to my own self-publishing. And I like, you know, like I said, like treat it like a job. Like I was there every day. Um, I'd put those Marvel comics, how to draw comics the Marvel way and mm -hmm. the image videos of how to draw interviewed by Stan Lee. I had those on like an eight hour VHS tape and I'd just play that over and I'd sit at the drawing table and man, I would just draw and draw. That's wicked. Amazing. That's and then I just hope that maybe Vendetta 2 will be better than number one, and number three will be better than number two. And I'm making mistakes in the public, but people liked it. And they were like, hey, this is fun, and it's exciting, and I like the characters. And I was generating a lot of mail. You know, it's pre-internet. I was getting original art from people. I was getting wow. Uh, wow. people, because I'm, I'm seen as a publisher now, too. So people are writing to Red Bullet Comics, looking for work as a writer, as an artist. I was getting all kinds of submissions, and now I'm—it's it's funny. It's like <laughs> I was begging for work. Now people are writing to me, "Hey, can you hire me?" I'm like, "Dude, I don't make any money myself." <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, you know, talk talk also about like because you obviously mentioned like some of the music you were influenced by, but um, what were some of the like 
like were there specific movies that were influencing you or like any specific comics? I mean, you talked about X Men one and but like what and Todd McFarlane, but like what what kind of other influences did you have at that time? Oh boy, all kinds of stuff. Um, man, the early heavy metal magazine, the mm. black and white magazines, um, everything from like even stuff like Evil Dead Two, of course, uh, crazy horror stuff. Um, oh man, a- animation, all, 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 everywhere, you know. Awesome. Um, and so you know this this whole Vendetta series is obviously you know just awesome um and so did you all always know that your next step was going to be to to move into artillery as like kind of being a side uh side story that you wanted to do how did that come about yeah see that worked out cool because i was just i knew i'd going to do vendetta one through four um and i would introduce some characters along the way and he was just super popular like as soon as i introduced him he got like all kinds of fan mail and oh. I was like, boy, if I if I actually do finish Vendetta number four, and I get to do in that fifth book, I got to do an artillery book. Of course. Wow. Yeah. And it's awesome. still it's probably my favorite out of all the books I've done so far. Oh really? But, I mean, I I think there's certain points where the books you can see I was taking on too much. Vendetta number four is what I think 32 pages with no ads. I all did right. that whole book by myself, and like I can see that time haste uh, hurting the, the pages a little bit huh. Huh. but i think like like vendetta number three i was in a good groove the artwork was getting real, a little tighter uh, the artillery book i took a little bit more time on yeah man ben we gotta we gotta definitely go through all these issues on the, <laughs> yeah on, no on the youtube doubt. yeah no <laughs> i'm actually flipping For through sure. them right now like as you're talking uh steve just so people can see and uh these are just incredibly wicked um and uh one one thing i also wanted to ask you about too just quickly going back to the metal conversation if you don't mind um is um you can't not talk about vendetta holy vindicator without talking about lethal fury so if you could shed a little light because on the first issue here in the back you're talking about you know if you're into metal send for my demo tape and then of course there's this incredible drawing here illustration uh, that you did of the right to remain violent, which we need to give credit to somebody for, is the greatest metal album title of all time. But if you can just, <laughs> if you can just walk us through Lethal Fury, what's the what's the backstory with the band? Sure, sure. Oh, and one footnote, by the way, um, the music you played at the end of the book club, I had a that feeling. Lethal Fury track. Mm-hmm. That's a it's off uh, Massachusetts Metal, which is a compilation record. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm not on that recording. Oh shit! So I had a, a feeling. Singer, it's okay. It's a different singer, a different guitarist. Mm-hmm. That was the original lineup of Lethal Fury. They recorded one song and then broke okay. up. Okay, okay. Because and then, yeah, because because I noticed that that comp was like '80s, and we're talking like '93. So I was a little confused, but I said, "Look, it's Massachusetts. I'm going to take a gamble. It's got to be the same band. So it's sort of the same it, band. It is the same band." Uh, when they broke up, I had an ad out looking for musicians. And so I met the drummer and the bassist. And so I sing and play guitar. So I replaced two people. We found a bassist and it was basically the same band. I brought songs I wrote in and then they had songs they had written. Amazing. But um, the Lethal Fury tracks that I sang and played on, there's seven of them. I made a CD comp at some point and it's, I don't know, maybe I made 20 of them or 30 of them. They're, I don't, it never got digitized. I don't think it's on YouTube. Oh man! So how um, can, so is is there like a seven inch, a cassette tape? Is there anything that we could hear? I'm so curious to hear the right to remain violent. I have a CD. I have to see if maybe I can make a copy and send it. To oh, you. I'll, I'll play the shit out of it on here if we can. <laughs> but I, mean, if, I, I would say if, if you want to play music that represents Red Bullet comics, you could play Skullhammer, Fear the Truth, or That's like true. like a video from from that stuff that's right. true that's right because you sent us a bunch of skull hammer stuff which is awesome we did a bunch of videos demons roulette paid in I've blood um oh man uh nomads of the wasteland yes I, I saw that video we'll we'll definitely make sure that uh skull hammer plays us out uh here today 
Um, awesome. Let's uh, let's I apologize to the easy listening fans tonight. <laughs> I don't think there are any if they're here for the no, Steve if, McArdle yeah, interview. If they're here for uh, this, they're, they're into the heavy stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, of course, you know, talking about Lethal Fury in 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 issue number two, I wanted to ask you about this. Um, and this, I think, again, speaks to you know your your your, your discipline and where you were going. You and I have to I have to admit, even though I had never heard the band or ever heard the tape, a, a little part of me got heartbroken because in here you actually say that you quit the band to focus on the comics uh, full time. Is that right? Oh yeah, but you know it's also it's a sign of the times too. Like I look back and, and you don't know when you're in the middle of something or, or if something's ending or beginning. Uh, being a metal and a hard rock guy, it was popular when I was in high school, so I just thought it was going to be that way forever. Right. By the early 90s, yeah, it, it was very hard for us to get shows. It wasn't really that cool anymore to be metal or right. be that kind of a band. You guys are so getting we grunged right out of there. We're getting grunged right out, for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, right. you know, that's a lot of great music in there, too. I love Soundgarden, and a lot of that mm-hmm. stuff was great. Right. But it just it was a different scene. And so we couldn't find a drummer. We couldn't find a bass player. It was kind of falling apart. I see. And the comic book had done actually better than I expected, to be honest. I didn't expect anything. And I did get a lot of fan mail. I was getting not big orders, but I got in, you know, six out of the seven or seven out of the eight distributors. That's amazing. That's huge. Yeah, I would say yeah. so. So coming out of nowhere with no education and just kind of like throwing stuff at the wall and I thought it was pretty good, and people were, even guys in my band were digging the comics. And oh, I'm sure. Yeah, because you also drew that awesome, the thing I, I was showing here on on camera, which is you you drew the, the what I'm guessing was the cassette tape demo uh, album art, which was yep. just this is awesome. Um, one thing I don't know if we touched on Ben is just kind of the origin story of Vendetta as a character. Like, how did like like do you remember like how that came together and in terms of like a character and what you how you kind of came up with it and what what Boy, you know that's kind a, of behind it? Well, it's a good question I, I i remember in one of your other videos you said something like mccardle must be at a certain age because the character of vendetta is conflicted and he's got this <laughs> inner tor- turmoil right vendetta has an inner turmoil not mm-hmm. not me necessarily I, I i'm not a christian or a religious guy okay but I wanted I to add some. I wanted to add a, a depth to the character. I wanted another guy that wasn't just another wow. Spider-Man or a Deadpool or 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 you know Captain America type of guy. I try, I'm trying to create something a little different. I wasn't sure how. Right. Yeah, I I, I was going to ask you if you were a Frank Miller fan because some of Frank Miller's work, like Born Again, will have some like Catholicism or oh, some yeah. Christian, you know references and things like that and i love the fact that vendetta quotes like scripture and it's it's really like on point totally uh the scripture and it's just such an interesting layer on top of like you know corporate espionage and cyberpunk and you know it's sort of like this phantom of the opera type vigilante and uh yeah so i was very curious to know what your sort of relationship it was with religion it also just strikes me as like very metal in some way, you know, just even more so just like that kind of iconography and that sort of, uh, I don't know, that element is like just a part of that whole flavor. Um, but it's interesting to hear that you, that you, 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 it sounds like you didn't have that in in your background at all. Not really, but I just like you, you hit the nail on the head where I'm just, I wanted to add something to the character and just because we've seen a million fisticuff, superheroes which you know mm-hmm. i love all of it but how could i make that a little bit different well, maybe he s- quotes scripture as he's punching somebody in the jaw yeah that's awesome. and you know I'm, I'm drawing superhero comics and i've got the bible next to me i'm pulling out quotes putting them in the book whoa and what's and what's funny because they're all legit quotes those are all from right. the bible um i was simultaneously called a blasphemer and oh, really? um praised by religious groups so <laughs> <laughs> mass appeal right, yeah. right please everybody yeah right. that's hilarious <laughs> that's amazing wow i love that so um 
I feel like we should also get into and just touch on too, because one thing we were also blown away with is, you know, when you sent me that incredible package, now I get a chance to thank you face to face for that too, because that blew my mind in terms of looking at, you know, the trading cards that you made and the posters and the window decals and the everything. Like you were this one man marketing machine too. So that's also something you don't really see much in what, what we call the comic or the power comic sphere is just like how much you were really you know going for broke on this which is really cool so like tell us about some of that stuff well dude um i tried my my yeah. best oh! i don't know if you can see this or not but you can hold on That's hold on i got it oh my god is that wow. is that what you advertise in the back of the book yeah yeah yep. Oh, this man. is the I black dagger was... model I didn't That's realize it was amazing. that big. Yeah, it's about oh. eight, eight inches, nine inches. Jesus Christ! So now, how did said, you, how did you get, <laughs> how did you, uh, how did you get that made? What was the process for that? Um, it was great. Like a guy approached me. Oh, okay. He had a, he had a toy uh, model company. They're doing like garage kits. Mm -hmm. and he had seen vendetta number three had just come out and he liked the cover and the design of the character and he was like hey you know can we work out some sort of a licensing deal and make model kits of of the, your villain and you know i'm a toy fan I'm, 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 uh, i had all the you know superhero toys as a kid and i was like of course yeah i'm, I'm in That's so yeah cool. i i yeah I, there was a lot of like, like the other things too, like you were saying, the trading cards. Um, that's another thing that came along the independent universe. Uh, boy, it was 92, 93. All the like very, uh, a lot of the local publishers were, you know, pooling their stuff and everyone would do two or three or four cards. And so that's, that's those four red bullet cards are out of a whole set. I think Amazing. there's maybe 60 or 72. Back then, you know, those right. acetylene comics. There was um, oh, uh, the guy that did Brewhead. Um, man, there was all so many other little publishers and stuff. Uh, one shot comics. Man, so, so cool because cool, I'm I'm looking here at the I'm showing right now on camera the the Black Dagger, the ad in the back of Crowbar for the Black Dagger action figure. Unbelievable. Yeah, it said I missed it. It says it's nine inches tall here. Uh, unbelievable so so freaking cool um I, i'm so glad you have one because i was gonna ask like can we see what it looks like but of course you got i've it got that one and one in the box still and i helped do the box art and i just figured out I'll, I'll just hang on to those as like That's little so mementos cool. of, a, of, of a of a of a cool time it's incredible. tell me a, i think they made a... 50 of them oh really 50, oh wow if that wow Tell us about Black Dagger. I mean, you know, Ben and I haven't had a chance to fully get into the, to the, to the, to the issue yet because you know we're we're definitely going to go through every single one. But like, tell us a little bit about like the design. I mean, the design of that like forearm dagger he's got and everything is so cool. And he's a ninja. Like, what's the what's the inspiration behind that character? Boy, just like a super badass ninja type of character. I guess everybody has to have one. You know, like sure. everybody needs. <laughs> Everybody's got their flag waving, you know, red, white, and blue guy. I'm like, who can be the most badass assassin? So he's <laughs> the highest paid assassin in the world because Amazing. he's the best. Amazing. Nice. Of course. And awesome. so he's, you know, part bullseye where he can hit stuff, you know, target with a pencil. He's got all kinds of, you know, gigantic, you know, daggers that come off of his forearms and throwing stars so wicked oh, rad all that good stuff yeah i love i love the look of that character uh quite a bit he looks like really fun to draw did you ever feel like like oh no this guy's looking like cooler than vendetta <laughs> at a certain point when you're drawing him or like or 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 did you ever wrestle with like you know him taking like some of like the spotlight you know, I, I figured that would be good, okay. you know, because uh, uh, like they always say, the hero is only as good as your villains. I want villains that are yeah. interesting, you know. Right. I mean, that's what happened with artillery kind of, right? Like, you know, people were reading the Vendetta issue and they're like, whoa, who's this artillery guy? And then he got right. his own yep. comic. Yeah. Um, 
That's amazing. Uh, we have to touch on um, uh, Crowbar. So yes. So 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 Crowbar was a uh, um, obviously something I had seen Crowbar won the cover of this on the internet like so long ago and always been like searching for it and trying to figure out like how I can get my hands on it. And I, I was so happy to see it. Like when I saw it in that box, I couldn't believe it. And then of course my mind was blown even more when I saw that there was a issue number two. But tell us about Crowbar as a series for you. What's the, where did the idea come from that? And, and, and what, what was your hopes and dreams for Crowbar? Sure. Sure. That Crowbar number two is, Man, that's got to be one of the probably the rarest of all the Red Bullet because there's not a lot of those. Ooh, wow, that's awesome. that's because that's the end of the run. Um, I was probably out of all distribution by that point. That was like '98 or '99. Wow. So I'm just doing conventions and mail order through oh. I think Comic Buyer's Guide and whatever I could get. But it was basically, you know, I wanted to do a team book like I had done the uh, Vendetta, which is a single character in artillery. Um, I actually. This does exist, but this is probably just as rare as the Nick Noise and the Nuisance book. Oh, we got to yeah. talk about that. Yeah. I, this, this actually, I think it made it into the price guide somehow, or maybe it was the Comic Buyer's Guide price guide. But wow. This was a really, I don't have any more of these left, unfortunately. But Oh, wow. So Amazing. cool, though. But so, so you wanted to do a team book, and yeah, t tell us a little bit about it. Like, because uh, this is now 1998, so this is you know year a couple years after you'd finished up with the other comics um and yet yeah, just tell us a little bit about the story i've i have yet to go through it i know ben you've read it once but we're gonna go through it here on the on the channel at some point yeah it's um you know like i wanted to do a team book so you've got um civilian reserves for operations of war so these are people with special powers and they're kind of like a covert government team and I know I sound pretty contrived at this point. Everybody's done stuff sort of like that. But um, but I like thought this. it was kind of cool. I tried to create characters that I thought were kind of different. And have, there's a conflict between some of them that don't get along. Um, but, you know. Uh, it's awesome. Yeah, I love it. I think it's, like, amazing. Well, thank you very much. It, it's 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 hard. I I I. I I, I like doing the team book, but I, I kind of, I think I'm more suited to doing like just single characters and I like the vigilante street stuff. Totally. So I'm, what I'm hoping is at some point, if I can finish number three and find some way to distribute it or anything is I'll eventually go back and do a new vendetta book. Oh, a new artillery. Book. Amazing. Oh my God. Maybe a trade, like a, a longer, like a single, you know, one and done. You know? One off, like a one, sh a one shot, another one shot. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And uh, I'm going to show you this while I, I, I got you here too. Because just Please. so you know, like I had a lot of things in the works in the 90s that I was working on and, and hoping to build up to because I was trying to still plan ahead as I'm working. Right. I figured I'd have Crowbar 9-3 finished and then I was going to go back and do a new, you know, probably a Vendetta book or something. So I had George Tosca draw four of the red bullet characters whoa wow. so i've got four great pinups of vendetta artillery bludgeon lord leviathan i'm going to ink and then i could put as pinups in the, one of the next books whoa amazing and I've got cool. a, i got a cover here if you guys can see this oh yeah hold Ooh. it right in front here so i can see it so right you guys face. can tell me if you recognize this style who this, who this is can you hold it right in front of your okay. face yeah, yeah, because yeah. I have it. Yeah, Whoa. It's getting thrown off by the glare. Yeah. Oh no, that's that's Vendetta. It looks like almost like, like a, like Conan. I don't know. No. Yeah, <laughs> it, it definitely has like a Conan vibe. vibe. Yeah. I'll give you a hint. Tomb of Dracula. Gene oh. Colan or Tom Gene Paul? Colan. Whoa! Wow. I, I commissioned Gene Colan to do a Vendetta cover. Wow. Oh. In the late nineties. Did he? ink it too that's my inking on his pencils that's your ink? that looks great yeah oh, thank you Holy do you know how hard shit. it is to ink gene colon <laughs> he's he's the most difficult penciler to ink he's the most sure. difficult guy i could have ever got but yeah i was so lucky i i got a chance to to write that's to amazing. him and talk to him yeah and he he was into doing the doing a vendetta cover for me wow. and i i never got to publish or use this right i so but, many gears are turning in my head right now 
but oh, like man, a, a po- possible things for the future. Um, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> uh, that's the way I've been, I, I've, I've been digging through my old artwork and the books and stuff and i have a lot of ideas i want to try to do with the stuff i've already got you know right yeah what can you talk about some of your plans for the future or or Please. if you you know have any uh sort of ambitions for continuing with comics in any way <laughs> yeah well that that's a good question because um i i want to get back to doing comics again and and drawing and some way to publish or something but i don't work at a printing place anymore so i don't have access to that but there's right. affordable printing so yeah. um, um if i can either you know I, I thought about maybe doing a crowd crowdfunding <clears throat> type of a project there's also print on demand options as well you know yeah like totally lulu has a comic book format yeah yeah something if i can do it affordable and do it in small numbers yeah. Um, cause I have, I've saved a couple copies of crowbar nine, one and two. Mm. And I was thinking if I did a Kickstarter, I could sell back issues of one and two. So you could buy the three complete series, Whoa, you cool. know, totally. yeah. cause no totally. one's going to buy number three without one and two. Right. And, and it's too expensive to do a trade paperback, I think right now for me. But if I could maybe do the third book and put it together with the other two, just enough to get the ball rolling. And then maybe that might, I mean, be able to pay for another book after that mm-hmm. yeah yeah that sounds like a good idea i could point you to some printers that i've used in the past that um are pretty affordable um but it's it's been a while but we could talk about it yeah dude i'd appreciate it i, I was gonna say ben how like american blood and 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 those books that, that are published did you do those like yeah i did those uh those are all self-published Wow. Uh, works, you know, yeah, from like the 2010s, you know, um, around that time. But yeah, and the, it's a beautiful it, book. Those man. Were, yeah, man, it's that, incredible. Then, right, yeah, they, they were all collected by Fantagraphics. So um, one I think is a web comic that I did, but uh, yeah, most of them were self-published works that oh yeah I would God. go around like you to conventions. I didn't have a distributor or anything, but. Um, it was probably like what you were dealing with in 1998, just selling stuff through, you know, mail order and through the internet and things like that. Man, that, that cover to night business, the hardcover. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it with like the, the, the like neon colors and everything. That's a masterpiece. Yeah. yeah. Very influenced by 1980s design and aesthetics for sure. Yeah. Oh, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love That's that stuff. So cool. <laughs> well, uh, definitely when we when we uh, when we hang out or when we're off offline here, I definitely want to uh, pitch you my my plan for the future of Red Bullet Comics because um, <laughs> yeah, I think there's a lot of cool things yeah. we could any we could any do. any help any ideas because honestly, like I'm just sort of coming back after uh, a long time away, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, there was personal stuff why I had to stop publishing by the late nineties. Um, and I spent a lot, a lot of years just kind of like building my business at home, um, playing in a few different bands. I started skull hammer about, I don't know, 10 years ago, but sure. I've always been drawing. And in the last couple of years, I've been just kind of get back and more into the comics and drawing Sweet. and reading. And, and it just kind of, it's just, I keep coming back back around to man i gotta finish crowbar nine <laughs> i, I want to do vendetta again i want to do a new artillery book mm. you I mentioned now's you the know, time you mentioned uh you know going like looking back at all those comics and all that artwork that you generated over the course of a decade do you have any uh specific memories that that came to the fore when you were doing that or is there anything when you look at back at all that that really substantial body of work what do you what comes to your mind boy there's a lot of things like there was that convention that i went to in new york with those first few pages of vendetta which weren't very good they were bad examples of what i was doing i could have brought better pages and Hmm. i remember waiting in line to go meet an editor and there was a kid in front of me in line and i'm probably 21 22 and I, this kid's like maybe old enough to drive. 
And he's like, hey, mister, can I see your portfolio? I'll show you my portfolio. And I showed him my stuff. He's like, oh, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I looked at this kid's work, and I was like, this kid's great. This kid's oh. definitely better than me. And, wow. and like, I better get my act in gear because this kid's 17. I don't know how old he was. He was a younger kid. Mm-hmm. And I was like, boy, this kid's really good. Like, going from a smaller pond to a bigger lake, you go to New York City, and you're with – everybody in the world there is for competition i was like boy this is going to be tough to get work at a marvel or a dc i so i just kind of decided pave your own path you know yeah right on um one last question that i had was um if like was there any point in time when you were coming up with this and dreaming up this world and, and expanding upon the world that you ever envisioned that um, one of the Red Bullet comics creations would ever have its own movie, and if it did, what did you sort of, or and and if you wanted one or ever thought about it, what 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 was your sort of concept for what a movie could be in this world? Boy, that's a good question. I, I guess I never really thought about it that far. I would love to do something like that, either like a gritty, like a R-rated maybe animation or a real like mm. pulpy movie. Yeah. You know, I would love something like that. It's funny back in the day, you know, cause um, I was starting this from like the late eighties, early nineties. And I was seen as a publisher, even though it was just me, I would get movies from Hollywood and they would send me movies looking if I wanted to license whether well, I remember getting movies with um, Sybil Danning. In like action oh, nice. movies, you know, Whoa. like Sybil Danning stars in, you know, Lethal Weapons, you know, part eight or something. Do you want to <laughs> license this movie for your comic book? Wow. <laughs> wow. Amazing. So One I got thing... a lot of actually good movies. Amazing. That's wild. One thing I was going to show here, too, is in the back of I think it's I think it's uh, Vendetta four in the back. There's a really cool kind of self portrait you did of, of, of you drawing around all your creations. Uh, in what looks like a room that you're in, kind of in now, um, what do you remember about that 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 self portrait there? It's pretty pretty badass. Oh man, that's that's my 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 bedroom back at and my old house. That was back when I, I lived in a different town. Um, I bought a new property like about 20 years ago. I live out, like I said, Central Mass. It's kind of quiet out here, but I like it. You know, you can always drive into the city if you want to go to shows and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I just, I'd seen, I, 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 I don't know if it was like the Kirby one or the Ditko self portrait with like all the other characters that yeah. they created around them. I, it's probably the Kirby one with the thing and everybody. And I thought, oh, I should do something like that. You know, it's and, awesome. And, and, and that's pretty much what the room looked like too. You know, the bat symbol on the ceiling and uh, little toys and guitars laying around and the saxon record on the floor saxon records that's that yep <laughs> i'm noticing that <laughs> which is awesome uh that's amazing uh, it's really cool and then obviously just right next to it is an amazing ad for some t-shirts so you so you must have printed up your own vendetta and artillery t-shirts as well yeah oh yeah see that's another thing because i had the um access to printing places amazing and uh I got something with your name on it here, Evan. Oh <laughs> man! I, wow, it's a it's it's a large. If you can if you can deal with a large, but it's oh, a, on the Red I'll, Bullet. I'll, I will lose weight for you. Logo, like and then it's wow. got the Red Bullet comic stripe on the sleeve. Oh, oh sick! Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll get this out in the mail to you like this week sometime. Oh my God, you're the you're the man. Uh, thank oh, you dude, so my much. pleasure. I'm, it it it. it it's it's so fun for me to have a pe- couple people that enjoy this stuff all these years later. Like, I never imagined people would find or remember a lot of these books. You know, it's it's kind of funny. So yeah, how does that feel? Like the fact that you know, like after so many years of trying so hard, I mean, so much work is put into these comics, and you can just see it on every single page. Like you know, to kind of maybe have a resurgence like a like a mini resurgence hopefully a bigger resurgence how does that feel man it's it's amazing it's great like like between 
yours and uh, maybe another video or two but on YouTube the last couple of months I've been flooded with people <laughs> writing and, and awesome. asking for books and and saying they love the artwork and they love the characters and asking about uh, crowbar nine um, I'm actually I'm working on a double commission right now oh, uh, oh. so it's, it's great it's gonna be uh, vendetta and artillery and the two pieces fit together like a double page spread <sighs> That's great. That's awesome. Wow. So I'm, I'm hoping it would be great to be able to come back and maybe have a little bit of an audience that's already interested or, or I don't know. Oh, yeah. We'll I mean, happens. definitely. For sure. It definitely seems like, you know, I've posted over the last 10 years a lot of comics and a, and a lot of ones I've found that are have similar backstories, you know, and um, none of them have really caught on like these have in a way where it's like people are want them they want to find out where i've never i have never been hit up so many times by people in our community like how, how can i get you know my hands on it? how can i find them and it's like you know so if people want issues i know your supply is limited but if people want issues should they do should they contact you should they write to you what should they do yeah they can write to me um there's probably only a couple copies of of most of these things left whoa um but you know if they get to me by the time this video comes out, hopefully I'll still have a couple left. Um, right. People have been saying, like, I should probably just do a, a trade paperback mm -hmm. or, like, a new printing of at some point. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, get in touch with me. Um, if I have anything left, I'll sign anything on request. I always put, you know, like, extra stuff in the bag, trading cards and stickers or flyers and stuff. They're awesome. I can attest to that. So, uh, and so, so, so people could just email you? Is that what they should do? Yeah, yeah, you can shoot me an email at redbulletstudios at comcast.net. Uh, I'm on Facebook. Uh, I'm not on all the different social medias. I, I don't like to spend too much time getting caught up on stuff. I want to spend time drawing. That's the, you know, that, right that's on. wise. That's wise. Um, ben, in, but anything? I'm awesome. That's amazing. Uh, ben, any last uh, last things you want to ask or share? or? No, I think that's uh, I just uh, like to say thanks, Steve, for making yes. the comics you made and putting in all the time. It's super inspiring and, you know, it's inspiring back then. And it's inspiring today. And I'm sure it's going to be inspiring for people for years to come. So thank you very much. Wow. Well, Ben, thank you very much, man. That's a high honor coming from, from a dude like yourself, man. Like I said, I'm a big fan now. And uh, I want to see more stuff from you. So and 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 reciprocally you guys are hoping i hope maybe give red bullet comics a second life again because i've been wanting to do it anyway and if i see like boy people actually are interested or there might be an audience you know i think yeah. there's going to be a groundswell starting here a, a grassroots uh following for these because like i said i mean any glimpse people have been getting of these issues, they've been wanting more and wanting to see more and get their hands on it. I've, I, like I said, I've been posting, you know, obscure comics for a while, and these ones are the ones that people seem to really be excited about. Man, I love to hear that because I mean, I, I, I guess you know, like like you said, you can see I pour my heart and soul into those pages, just like I, you know, you notice I it right know away. Everybody does. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's very so, evident know, like, from page one. <laughs> Oh, thanks a lot. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, like from like the, the logos and and like you said, the costume design and and trying to mix storytelling. I mean, I'm trying to learn a lot of things at once, kind of all at the same time. And again, like I made a lot of mistakes in front of people as I'm going along. But I was hoping that at least at that, at least at least it leaves a little bit of a legacy yes. to go back to. Definitely. And even if it's not perfect, hopefully it it's entertaining and. People it's remembered definitely. it fondly and it's, are discovering those, it new like it. It's those imperfections, I think, that are the things that we that we love the most about uh, your work and other power comics. It's 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 the fact that they yeah. they aren't like super refined. You know, it is this raw energy, mm -hmm. and if there are, you know, mistakes, those those mistakes add to this, uh, you know, That's unique true. reading experience of comics, and and you don't really get that anywhere else. It feels very yeah. tactile. It's very tactile. 
and it's very um, like genuine. And I think the sincerity yeah. behind that and the enthusiasm that goes into works like that, um, it just it just feels like you're finding something really organic and special. Um, maybe at the time it didn't seem like that way because at the time right. everyone's wanting to be perfect and everyone's wanting to create and, and, and get the jobs at the big studios and things. So they want all the work to be perfect. But I think that something's lost in that, you know, when it's when it's a little, you know, when it has a little of those uh, rougher edges, I think it's it becomes really interesting, especially now when everything is so glossy and everything is lost uh, a sense of uh, being iconic or whatever, you know, it's it now it really stands out when you when you look at an issue of Vendetta like today and you look at this, I mean, it's just it's just just nothing else like it anymore because we've gone so no. far the other direction, you know, um, so. I don't, I don't have a musical background, but, um, you know, I like to think of like power comics as, you know, just a garage band, you know, with that has to like go record an album, like in just one session overnight, you know, and they just have to lay it all on the line live. And, uh, you know, it could, not everybody hits their mark or anything like that. Yeah, so it's just totally but it's also the kind of, it's, it's not like overly produced. You know, it's not. No, it's like know, it's like everyone's. It's like everyone wants to make a metal record, you know. But then there's the one guy who brings like the synthesizer there, you know, and like it's it's not like <laughs> exactly what the other guys in the band wanted. But then they all kind of get together and make something like whoa, super trippy. That's even <laughs> way cooler to find thirty years later. Sorry, I had to. Get that piece no, in there. exactly. Man. <laughs> but like, I, I thought of this before. I, I think it was after I watched one of your videos, I was like, "Power comics are the demo tapes of comics." Like, That's if so you get into music, and yeah. once you get past all the major label albums, and you start collecting bands' demo tapes yeah. and bootlegs. That's right. Power comics are the bootlegs and the and the demos of of artists. Like one kid in his basement, like. It's amazing when you see, yes. you know, like John Tarr and some of these other ones where it's just, it's a 15 year old kid. Yeah. Yeah. You know, on, on notebook paper or whatever. And totally. That's what yeah. it is. That is exactly that's how what we it is. all start. That's right. I didn't even realize that, but that's exactly what it is. It's like, of course, you know, those happen to be the most unfiltered, you know, interesting time period in like a band's life is when they're doing their demos and they're doing something where no one's telling them to do anything different and it's super pure. Uh, right, yeah. they're not getting paid to do it. They're just doing no, it for the right. love, love of it. You know? The love of the game, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, and I've got demos by bands that got signed to major labels, and you hear the demo version of the song, and then the slick produced version of the song, yeah. and the demos are normal, usually better, like more than half wow. the time. That They're hungrier, there's more energy. Mm -hmm. That's right. right. Yeah, it's not playing to a click, and it's got, it's got some real, you know, I don't know, live, yeah, live energy, human quality to it, which is really interesting. Um, oh, yeah. Well, that that about wraps it up for us. Thanks so much, Steve, for joining us and being a part of this. We'll definitely have you back and um, got to keep us updated on every single thing you do and we'll always be here to support it. So uh, thanks a lot. And um, man, yeah, just appreciate you so much. Dude, thank you guys so much, man. It's a, an honor and a pleasure. You guys are keeping real comics alive and I look forward to hopefully uh, drawing some more comics and, and, and getting some more stuff out there again. That would be awesome. That would be right on. All right, dude. Thank you so much, Steve. Uh -huh.